Hello guys, I'm Akirik Moksha Bhatia and I'm back with another video. Today we will be discussing about what is site analysis and what are the factors that need to be considered while doing the site analysis. So let's get this show on the road. Before we jump to the method of doing site analysis, let us discuss what is a site analysis. Basically, the process of investigating and evaluating a site's social, historical, climatic, geographical, legal and infrastructural aspects and combining these findings into visual information, typically in the form of site analysis diagrams, is known as architecture site analysis. Before starting any design, you will know the context of the site through site analysis. Okay. So the idea is to provide us with information about the location before we begin our design process. You will be required to do a site study for each architecture project you work on during your coursework and professional experience. So let's jump to how to do site analysis. Producing your design will be easier if you can extract as much context as possible from your site analysis. Investigate your site beforehand so that you can visit it prepared with questions. This is the first step in starting a site analysis. Site analysis diagrams frequently show patterns related to land use, sun and shade paths, circulation and movement and public versus private areas. So let's discuss what you need to keep in mind to proceed with site analysis. Okay, so number one. It should consider the current physical condition of the site and the surroundings. That's very obvious. Number two, the relevant historical information can form the analysis foundation. You can know whether there are any changes in the site. Is it either in the build form or in the landscape? You can also see the physical changes on the site that happened with time using Google Earth tool. You can choose the year in which you were viewing a certain site using Google Street View. And number three, the surroundings of the site are the other important aspects that must be considered. Now, let's discuss in detail. When conducting an architectural site study, the following general kinds of data will be examined. Number one, location, where the location of the site is. Number two, neighborhood context. The site's immediate surroundings including information on buildings, zoning and other factors. Number 3. Zoning and size. Dimensional factors include site area, access, easements, height limits and boundaries in addition to any other designs. Obtain zoning plans or documents. Determine the zoning of the site under local authorities and the allowances and restrictions for development and building under this zoning. Number 4. Legal information, ownership, restrictions, council related data and upcoming plans for urban growth. Number 5. Natural physical features. Actual features of the site such as trees, rocks, topography, rivers, ponds, drainage patterns. Number 6. Man-made features. Walls, scale, materials, landscaping, setbacks and the surrounding vernacular of the existing buildings. Number seven, circulation. Movements of cars and pedestrians through and beyond the place. Think about the length of the heavier patterns and the timing of these movements. Future changes to the roads and traffic should also be taken into account. Number eight, utilities. Any telephone, gas, water, sewage and power services located on or close to the site as well as any distances, materials and depths. Number 9. All meteorological data including precipitation, snowfall, wind direction, temperature obviously and sun path. Number 10. Sensory. Uh, this covers the site's auditory, tactile and visual elements including vistas, sounds and other things. Number 11. Human and cultural. The neighborhood's sociological, physiological behavior and cultural features. Okay, so patterns and behaviors, population density, ethnic patterns, work, earnings, values and so on. It will include all the historical, culture and demographic significance. So, 
these all were the steps or the pointers that you need to keep in mind while doing site analysis. And to conclude, I would like to say your site analysis presentation could range from a single site plan to a whole report. Once you have collected the data, the outcome will include a series of documents, photographs, drawings, diagrams, sketches, text and other interpretation of the conditions of the site. So, my dear architects and my budding architects, this is all for today. You may ask your questions in the comment section and we'll be back soon with another helpful video. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Bye.